So normally and naturally, if I happen to be a congregant and I saw J. Israel and this person, with all that J. Israel has said he did in the past, I can never ever think of myself sitting under these two. There are several other things that Chris Okafor has done, his prophecy, you know, uh, his colleague in South Africa did Pamela Y. And he too came to Nigeria and he did Joy Y. You know, there are so many of them, but that is not what I'm looking at. Now, so these two came together and their, their partnership is going to do a lot. Is going to do a lot. And let's move away from that. I said there was a message he preached. And I will play a little part of that message for you and I will say something about that. You know, I said somewhere in one of my videos that error and truth does not mean that when, you know, when somebody is spitting errors, that the whole message will be bad. No. Now, sometimes it might be 99% truth and 1% error. And because 99% had been true, you may not even know when that error has been inserted into it. But then, it's, I, I, I wouldn't say it was an outright error. Listen to him. Take in verse 8 and 9 and show them the glory of the world in the in a moment of time. And they said to him, if you will bow down and worship me, all this will be done. Now hear what he says again. He said, for it has been delivered unto me. Whomsoever I wish, I give. Who delivered it to him? Who delivered it to him? Hey, tell your neighbor, say, talk to me. Who delivered it to the man? I mean, to the devil. It was the man, Adam. Now, that Lucifer was right. He said, it has been delivered unto me. To whomsoever I wish, I give. Now, he's stating his right and power of attorney. The same way you were delivered by your grandfathers, by your fathers, by your forefathers. When your fathers went to cut deal with the devil and said to the devil, as for me and my family, we shall worship you. I know you were not born, but you were in the loins of your father. So by implication, you were dedicated to the devil before you were born. I know you have given your life to Jesus, but there is still a hold. There is still the power of attorney. There is still the power of ownership. There is still the power of access given to the devil by the reason of the legal dedication that is why you are born again but the devil is still humiliating you that is why you are born again the devil is still harassing you is anybody hearing me yes papa this thing can travel for generations in a family for generations for generations remember let me share this with you In the same Genesis 49, sit down for one minute. <laughs> Let me work it, I'm rounding up. How this thing can travel? Listen, everybody, please, I'm begging you to listen to me. It takes one man to make mistakes for many people to suffer. Our fathers have seen, and they are no more. We suffer the punishment they deserve. What is this thing that they have done? God. If you came from family where they worship idol, you are in problem. I will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations. Deuteronomy chapter 5 from verse 7 to 9, 10. Exodus 20 from verse 3 to 6. I will visit. Now, many of you came from families where they, share, where they buried human beings alive. Your father's bed, are you are you not are you not the seed of the man that buried human being alive? The Bible said when Cain killed Abel, the blood of Abel cried for vengeance. Some of you, the blood that was shed by your grandfathers, by your forefathers, by your ancestors, they are crying poverty, some are crying barrenness, some are crying sudden death. What, what is crying in your family? Ah. Is that correct? I'll show you something. So, if you ask me, uh, is there is there consequence? Are there consequences arising from what our 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 ancestors did? Some of you will be angry with me now. 
why are you bringing ancestors into this thing? My friend, there are consequences. Now, but is it the will of God that a child of God keeps suffering the, the, for the errors and the wickedness of his forefathers? It is not in the will of God. But there is a legal ground that the devil will use to stand on and to hold you down if you don't know your right in Christ Jesus. Now, even Prophet Jeremiah, at some point in his lifetime, when there was so much suffering in the land, Jeremiah in Lamentations cried out and he said, Our father sinned. <coughs> That's Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. Our fathers have sinned and are no more, and we bear their iniquities. Our fathers, this sin was the sin of the fathers. They have done these things and they are no more, but then we are bearing their iniquities. And um, even in, uh, in the same Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 20, the Bible said, the man, we acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Now, let me tell you something. If your, your father forcefully took another person's land and you knew about it, he took another person's land and you grew up, you inherited the land. You knew your father told you maybe they even killed somebody. And that family are still there. They are still bearing the pain of it. Maybe some person said something or didn't say something and something is going wrong in your family. Now, if you don't restitute, because now you say you are born again. Hmm? You say you are born again. Now, but you cannot be eating what you know already is not yours. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord may even be convincing you about that. Convicting, convicting you, asking you to do the right thing of returning this, the ownership of the land to the right people that own it. And you sit on it because maybe you think you are stronger, you have money. Now, consequences will come irrespective of the fact that you claim to be a Christian. There are consequences. Now, but we know that there are some of the things that our ancestors did and we, we had no part in it. Like did, did he mentioned in that video, dedicating the entire lineage to the devil. And you know that there's something the Bible called the willful, the willful uh, slave. Now the Bible asks, shall the prey be delivered? You know, is it possible that this prey, this slave, either willful or not willful, lawful captive, can he be delivered? The Bible said, yes, even the lawful captive, not just the captive, but the one, the lawful captive. Why did the Bible call some lawful captive lawful in the sense that legally the enemy has the right of possession, right of access, like he put it, right of ownership over these people because lawfully on an altar, a certain grand or great grandfather came and promised, my lineage will follow you. Those are lawful captives. But the Bible says that even the lawful captives shall be set free. You may be a lawful captive and you do not know that there is an opening for you to be set free. Now, the same uh, Jeremiah that was crying that, you know, their fathers committed sin and they are no more. And uh, now, they, the children, are the ones bearing the brunt. He also lamented again and said that the fathers have eaten grape, you know, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But God came and God said something. Um, in verse 29 of uh, the same Jeremiah, in those days they shall no longer say the fathers have eaten sour grapes. Now, these are the truths that you must know. In those days, the fathers, uh, it, it shall no longer be said that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2. Now, remember, re remember the, the Proverbs in Jeremiah chapter 31 where we read. Now, in Ezekiel chapter, see how we are progressing in lamentation. He said that their fathers have committed sin and are, no, are not. Now the children are bearing the brunt of their sin. And then again, in that Jeremiah chapter 31, the Bible says that proverb shall no longer be said in Israel. That the fathers have eaten grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. Now, God again came because Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they were of all, you know, the same generation almost. They were, they were almost, um, you know, at the same time. They were mates, you know, at the same time. Now, the Bible says, the Lord was asking, what, if you read in verse 1, you see that it was the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean 
by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel. The fathers have eaten salt grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, that this proverb shall no more be used by Jew in Israel. Behold, also some mine, the soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. So, now if you do not know the truth, this truth, now you will die in the ignorance of the fact that your, your forefathers dedicated your lineage to an idol and that idol is pummeling you. That idol is the reason why you are frustrated and sometimes when things are not going well, you know, this kind of message will be preached to you and you'll be asked to sow seed. You sow seed. Sometimes they will ask you to go and close your account that if you know the, the level of sacrifice your great-grandfathers did, that you can, it's not just saying that, 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 will cost, that will cost you nothing. You have to sow something that is bigger than what they did. So you go and close your bank account. You can even sell your wife in order to come and uh, deliver yourself. It is not true. Now, the Bible tells us something, that he that is in Christ is a new creation in all things. And you old, old things will pass away. Once you come to Christ, you are given a new identity. But it is possible for you to be in Christ. You are born again. You are living righteously. You are not living in sin. But then this, this very fact, this foundation will be binding on you because the devil is preying on your ignorance. Now you can imagine a Pentecostal church pastor that is still preaching this. Not only him that, that preaches this. There are a lot of them that are still preaching this. And there are so many of us that wouldn't even believe in what I'm saying because you've been indoctrinated to believe that. Now, do I believe that there are consequences? Yes, there are consequences. The, the, the ancestral misbehaviors, the misbehaviors of, our, of some of our ancestors and their, their ignorance, because in those days, it was actually, they were doing those, some of those things they were doing, thinking that they were doing good things for us, their grand, great grandchildren, their future generation. So they were doing it not knowing that it will have an effect on they are, you know, that they are great grandchildren. Because it was, it was, now even the Lord told David, I, I am allowing you, you know, to sit on the throne of Israel forever. If your son offends, I will chastise him. That means, you know, you see, spirits are jealous. So it, there's a possibility that your great grandfather dedicated all of you to, to an idol and you grew up, you are not even serving Jesus. You say you, there's nothing, you know, that concerns, hey, my friend, you will suffer, you will suffer tire. If you give your life to Jesus and you don't know this truth, to stand on it consistently and not waver, consistently and not waver, irrespective of the foundation, the blood of Jesus will break it. Now, the Bible says, for those of you that will have an argument, blood speaks. Now, blood speaks. When Abel was killed, his blood was testifying against Cain, even right from the ground. Now, whether the blood of a righteous man or the blood of an unrighteous person, blood do speak. But we have an advantage that there is the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Now, take that Abel to be that man that your father, your great-grandfather buried alive, those youth, those young ladies, girls and boys that they buried alive. Your great-great-great-grandfather might, might be a king. And when the day he became a king, some youths were buried alive. The day he died, about seven hefty men were, you know, stripped naked, and they used a palm front to cover their mouth, and they were thrown into the, the grave. And they bore your the, the corpse of your great grand great great grandfather who happens to be a king. Igwe. They buried those guys alive with the dead king. And you think that those things don't speak. They speak. But once you come to Christ, they will have no effect on you as long as you know this truth in righteousness. Brother, you that we want to argue with me. See, our weapon of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Do you not know? That we rest not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. They are in high places. So, now this, this is just it. But remember that what I just did was that if you have been discouraged from serving God, from having fellowship with Christ, from believing in Christianity, Israel did a lot to make a lot of people. Those that followed him in simplicity and in trust because he came out and he did a lot of good things. And once he began to meander and, you know, do the things he was doing, a lot of people got the, the discouraged. But please don't get discouraged. Anybody can fall. And I still pray that God will show him mercy and grant him true salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. So that is the video there. Let me know what you think about it. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you, Shalom.